Yeah. I still connect them. Let me mute it over here. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let me press record and we'll begin. All right. In front of greetings, in front of blessings to all here in Zoom, those on YouTube live, whoever, um, if when y'all show up, y'all show up. This evening, we will be talking about Santa Faxath. I think I said it right. Santa Faxath, which is one of the tunnels of set. So let me give a brief breakdown or definition and, and background on this so we have a little understanding. The reason uh, myself and Demetri is going to discuss this is because in several, a uh, couple of the classes, I'm going over this now. The darkest shadow work class, I'm doing the clip off, but we're doing it in a shadow work way. And in the beginner's class, we're doing the clip off, but we're doing it in a intense study way. So let's begin. What is the tunnels? Well, first of all, Working in the tunnels is pivotal to your development. It's pivotal to your work, all right? Because for the main reason that it's kind of like an initiatory process, all right? A process that will empower you in a natural way. How, because it is initiatory, it's a self-initiatory process. So it's an individualistic journey. Although you, may ha you will have similarities with others and there's certain things that'll be the same, there's a, a lot that will be different. So comparing with someone else, it's not beneficial to you. Your, your journey is your journey. Now you can share notes. I'm not saying don't share notes, but don't expect your journey and your experiences working with the tunnels of set, the clip path to be the same as someone else's. There's general things that we all will experience, but it's a very individual thing. So it will be very different from person to person. All right. Always keep that in mind because sometimes I feel people compare notes as if that other person is the barometer for what you should be experiencing. And that's incorrect. You're yeah, I think that's one of the biggest mistakes people make. <laughs> exactly. Your experience is your experience, and it therefore will be different. And I'll give you an example why it will be different. One, your background. And I'm not just talking about ethnic or racial background. I'm talking about the environment you grew up in. Some are from the Northeast. Some, some might be from the Southeast. Some might be from the West. Different backgrounds, meaning the culture of those areas, is a little different than somewhere else. If you don't believe it, well, I grew up, I was raised up north. When I came to the south at first, it was a culture shock. Especially when certain people talk, especially when they have that Geechee dialect. All you can do is look at them like, what the hell are you saying? The culture shock, the things, the way people perceive things, the way they look at things is totally different. Okay? So keep that in mind that your ex initiatory experience on, in the clip path is not going to equate to someone else's. Because it's personal, what opens you up may not open someone else up. One tunnel may affect you in a way that's profound. Another tunnel, eh, you don't feel so much. That doesn't mean it didn't work. It just is a personal thing. Certain things with the tunnels open you up because it may resonate with certain issues you may have. It may resonate with certain things that you may need. So therefore, always keep that in mind as you go forward. Now, the cliff path itself, there's 11 cliff right, which is singular for, it's a shell, a shell or a gateway, okay, or entrance way, okay? And those 11 clip off are linked by 22 tunnels, which in the West we call the tunnels of set. 
those path, those tunnels and pathways are literally realities to other worlds and dimensions beyond this earthly plane. Now, mind you, some will say there's seven planes of existence, some will say 11, so on and so forth. That's always going to vary. But we vibrate right now in this physical plane. It's the lowest plane of vibration. Don't look at planes as sitting on top of each other either. Okay, that's a misnomer and, and something incorrect we do. They basically mesh into each other. And your vibration frequencies allows you to basically go into the different planes of existence but they're not sitting on top of each other. That's just how our minds you know, describe or try to understand things because our thought is very linear a lot of times. It's not circular, it's not holistic, it's more linear, especially how much we've been influenced here in the West. So don't do yourself a disservice and try to say, oh, look, so the physical plane's here. And then you have the astral and material plane. No, 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 that's the, no, you're messing yourself up. They basically mesh. And as you start going through these tunnels and cliff on, you'll start realizing then these things like literally mesh into each, each other where you sometimes have difficulty realizing when one begins and one ends. So this world or realms is where you will meet different gods, demons, and other spirits. Fantifaxath is the tunnel which connects the Cliffa, which is considered the earthly realm, with Gamaliel, the moon or the astral plane. The Cliffa Lilith is also known as the entrance to the other side, Citra Ara, as some would say. The Citra Ara and Fantifaxa is the gateway to the astral realms. The gateway to the astral realms, okay? Much of the work you do in the Cliffa is going to be in the astral realms to eventually you start to raise in your vibrations and frequencies where you can go through these different tunnels to get to these different cliff off. And this tunnel, fancy facts out that we're discussing tonight, the initiated begins with a mystical process of being dead. Dead or putrefied putrefaction or decomposition. It has been said on a left-hand path that your journey is and will always be, is and will always be one of death many times over. Not in a physical sense, although we all will taste that one day, more so in a spiritual or mental sense. You will experience many deaths in your journey through the clip hop. And it's necessary for your growth to experience these deaths because there's certain things that we hold on to that no longer serve us. So if we do not all allow ourselves to die, then we have basically become stagnant, stuck. For example, at one time, this is some metaphysical science. At one time, it was said that every seven years, you experience a death. Some would say nine years, meaning your physical body, the cells, the composition of the cells would literally die off and be reborn. So you would experience a physical death every seven to nine years. Not to mention your consciousness and all the things that die with that as you mature and grow and you look at life differently than how we've always looked at it, okay? So keep that in mind that you will experience many deaths in your journey through the clip path. Now, keep in mind that Fancy Faxath is the beginning stage of this, these tunnels where you really experience that death. Fancy facts that is sometimes known as the bowel of the earth, the bowels of the earth, a space that dwells creatures, beasts, monsters, vampires, succubi, incubi, so on and so forth. These creatures, so to speak, that you will meet 
sometimes come to tempt you. They come to tempt you by way of your weaknesses. So let's fa- let's say you are super super cap super super just super overly sexual. Now we're not demonizing anybody if you're superly over overly sexual, but these creatures look for things like that, and therefore the succubi and incubi come tempting you with all the desires that are in your subconscious mind, even your conscious mind. They'll come tempting you in the form or fashion that you most desire. They're not coming to tempt you to to make love to you and dance and do this, you know, slow dance. They're coming to feed off of you. And sometimes people, when they get into dancing facts, when their weaknesses show up, they tend to dwell in fancy facts for a long time because those weaknesses are what these creatures feed upon and use to literally devour you. So this is why in a lot of left-hand path work, we're always trying to confront our weaknesses and learn ways to transmute that weakness into a strength. Or if it just can't be transmuted, just eliminate it altogether. But for the most part, a lot of your weaknesses can be transmuted into a strength. So therefore, you have to kind of like really do some work on a preliminary stage before you even start working with the clip path. A lot of people want to work with the clip path because they hear all this loveliness and how divine and great it is and, you know, all this stuff. But it's not it's no joke. The clip path is no joke. It literally is one of the hardest workings on the left hand path. Because of all the little different tunnels you go through and all the things you encounter, it can be one of the darkest regions that you're encountering in your work, fancy facts, especially. However, if you have tremendous willpower on your journey and you are in your fancy facts, that willpower will then take these so called creatures that are there to possibly feed off you and you will make them your allies. They will guide you, teach you, and therefore you become stronger. More wisdom is gained by yourself. But your willpower is essential. Building your willpower is is of the utmost importance. And how do you accomplish becoming stronger in will? One thing is challenging yourself to fulfill tasks that you've long left unfulfilled. For example, try if you want, if you feel, oh my goodness, I'm overweight, I don't like the way I'm looking, but you're still eating Twinkies and, and, and ding dongs. I don't care how much you complain about your weight, you're not doing nothing about it. You have to have the willpower to say, look, man, I need to stop eating this stuff. That does not mean totally have to eliminate it. You do have the willpower to say, okay, every so often I'll give myself a treat. But the problem is a lot of times treats become binge eating and then people gain even more weight. So you have to have the willpower to kind of just say, okay, listen, I need to go to the gym. I need to exercise on a regular and I, I need to have healthier choices in my diet. Your willpower has to grow, okay? And the only way you grow your willpower is by challenging yourself to stay disciplined. One of the failures that people have on the left-hand path quite often is they are not disciplined when they enter this path and while they're on this path. The lack of discipline is what leads to problems in your work, even more problems than you already may have. So you have to kind of develop some kind of discipline to increase your willpower. So therefore, when you're on your journey, you're not so easily fed upon, so easily devoured, so to speak. So having a true will, okay, that true will will allow you to explore these different tunnels and realms or pathways through the cliff up 
but it also will allow you to take your sexual desires and transmute it in a way that you learn how to channel that sexual energy at times to accomplish more work. And other times, yes, your sexual energy you will encounter in a physical sense and enjoy that too. But there is a way through this work where you'll learn how to take that sexual energy to propel yourself through the tunnels and through each of the gateways, okay? And especially in Fancy Facts I, you really start to learn the art of vampirism, the importance of vampirism. Therefore, instead of being fed upon, you feed upon these gods, demons, and so forth to increase your power, your energy, to be able to withstand the onslaught that you may experience in Fancy Facts I, or any other tunnel or gateway after. You will eventually gain power over the astral plane in your journey through the clip -off. But it begins a lot of times in Fancy Facts Ath or in the first cliff, -off, which is the cliff of Lilith, sometimes called the cave of Lilith or the cavern of Lilith, symbolic of the black vulva, symbolic of the womb. So here, Fancy Facts Ath is the bow of the earth. And the first cliff on Lilith is the black vova or the womb of the earth. All right. So your journey in Fancy Facts, uh, therefore, is to learn to master and overcome a lot of your weaknesses. Okay. The visions of the night visions or the visions of the night will begin to awaken in you, meaning you'll begin to see things from the sub to the unconscious that will begin to reveal itself more and more about things long forgotten, ignored, or things that will help you grow and empower yourself. Now, the tunnel does have symbolic influence from Saturn which energies are closely connected with death. A lot of necromancers, all right? And in necromancy class, we're, we're getting to the phase where we're gonna discuss Saturn and do work during the time of Saturn, where you will experience death yourself, but also learn how to work with the spirits of the dead. Necromancy in itself has been very closely connected and some at times it's called Saturnalia necromancy. In this stage, the, initiato the, initi <laughs> the initiatory journey begins. The magician leaves behind the old eggshells of life and dies in a symbolic way only to be reborn. Alchemically, this is salve or dissolution. You start to be dissolved, dissolved. The old you is dissolved, it's going away. It's here where the magician enters inside of their own darkness going deep inside of his, his or her consciousness or unconsciousness to subconsciousness. But then they cross into another process known as coagula or integration. Then this means to be aware of the occult aspects of your own being, yourself. What aspects of you, the occult, the occultare in Latin for hidden aspects of yourself. Therefore, the trip through the tunnels and initiatory process is always and has always been something personal. And like I said earlier, no two will ever be the same. This chaotic process will overcome the dogmas that may still plague us, the morality that still plagues us, these things that limit us. It breaks free from the borders, boundaries, and limitations. Therefore, you can expand beyond what has enslaved your minds for all this time. In Fancy Facts Act, your astral senses become more acute. They become more keen. You start to have more vivid dreams, lucid dreaming, so forth, becomes more constant. 
for the express purpose of the messages that you've long needed, you've now jump-started it, or you start to receive these messages. You start to receive the learnings, the teachings of self that you've long ignored or forgot. So through Thanti Faxa, that's where a lot of this journey begins. A lot of times people jump into the cliff and they're ready to just go into the cavern of Lilith, right? Where Naama rules. That's a place to start. And I start, my, my classes that deal with the cliff path, I start there too, but I don't stay there. Because the next journey for those in these classes that we're dealing with this is the empty facts half. That's the next journey. And some of y'all may have done the work before with Antifacts, but this new one is wholly, totally different. So the journey goes in from, from the cliff, or we're going to go into these different tunnels because sometimes you do need the tunnels more than you realize. People always just want to deal with the cliff. Oh, nah, buddy. These tunnels are there for a reason. And you have to be brave of heart and strong to go through each of these tunnels, all right? The entities who dwell in Fanti Faxath are old beings. Some would call them the eldritch gods, right? Some are related to some of the uh, H.P. Lovecraft mysteries, okay? Cthulhu and so on and so forth. The old gods, the old beings that have been forgotten by humanity, and some of these beings are vampiric. They tend to drain life force from the magician, the sorcerer or sorceress that is journeying through these tunnels and gateways. So you have to be ready because seduction is at a premium in these tunnels. But you can and will overcome that. Now, because the antifax has to bow the earth, the symbolism of that is poisonous snakes and a black bulb. A lot of times you have symbols of each gateway. Well, in Fancy Facts, one of the symbols is a black bulb encircled by poisonous snakes. But don't think of the poison as what well, we've been trained. Poison is evil. It's wrong. It's going to hurt you. You're going to die. No. This poison produces an alchemical elixir, which transforms the mind and the spirit of you. The, initi the initiated one for the express purpose of altering your state of consciousness, for the purpose of shifting from the normal, mundane, everyday consciousness to an altered state of consciousness that therefore expands beyond the limited and taps into the unconscious and different thoughts, parts of yourself. So the poison allows us to take off the veil of this mundane world we live in, the illusions of the world, so on and so forth. But the sorcerer sorceress begins with a process of alchemical transformation known as negrido. Yes, blackness or putrefaction. The method of the work with the tree of night and the tunnels of set varies from magician to magician. There is no one way, so do not ask, am I doing it the right way? As I tell people in all the classes, it is your way. It has always been your way. The problem is sometimes you're not sure of your way. So you need a little guidance, but that's it. The, the, the person's just there to point you to yourself and say, okay, go ahead. You got it. Do it. All right? So sometimes when you do the clip path, a lot of it depends on the school of thought or the magical tradition you're coming from. That has a lot to do with your work and your results. When you journey through the clip path, myself, I come from a very draconian basis. Others may come from a different you know, tradition. Whatever, is, it, it, whatever works for you, that's what it works. There's no right or wrong way, as we said before. All right? My brother Demetrius, at on, um, brother. All righty. Um... Yeah, this um, particular tunnel, the Fanta Faxa, first like we were discussing before we came on, 
has like the most difficult name in the world to say. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this one, it, it, it's death that is uh, very prevalent in it. Uh, you're going to experience a lot of ego deaths as you go through. If, if you're new to the clip off, welcome to Ego Death 101. <laughs> That's going to be happening a lot. Um, this one in particular, you are also learning the art of malediction, better known as good old fashioned black magic. Uh, you'll be learning to flip your enemies. <laughs> so that's taught a lot. Uh, the name Fanta Faxaf is also not only just the name of the tunnel, it is also um, the name of the guardian of the tunnel. If you successfully navigate this tunnel, the power of that entity becomes yours. You now control and operate with those particular entities in there fail in it you'll probably be up in there for a little bit you can get out it's not into the world you can get out of there but it's going to be rough uh what you were saying earlier about about uh, like the dimensions like intermeshing yeah that becomes very evident to you when you start uh, doing this work and this stuff starts to presence itself in your physical day-to-day -day life you know yeah, this is not like a hey we're, we're gonna have this really amazing um ritual and be done, and then we're gonna have all this power. It's like, no, there's work to be done in that. Uh, you know, you do your work within the ritual itself, and then there are challenges and things that happen in physical reality. Um, you know, you'll just, you'll be dealing with that. Uh, to, to really understand some of this, uh, there's a book by Kenneth Grant called The Night Side of Eden. Mm -hmm. uh, to get a hardback copy, it's rather expensive. I mean, there's a PDF copies all over the place on the internet. Find them. Um, read that. Uh, another one, love him or you hate him, it's your girl, VK Jahannam. He has uh, information on the tunnels of set on his uh, website. And I give it to him. He put a lot of information, a lot of work up there. Uh, check that out. He, I mean, there's a chant there. His, that's one of his specialties, those magical chants to activate and uh, open that energy up so you can work with it and connect to it. You can have that experience yeah. of it in your life because that's what you want to do. You want to uh, activate that so you can go through it. Uh, like I said in a uh, another chat that we had, we're, we're doing a jailbreak here, folks. Uh, th the tunnels, yeah, this is where possibly yourself and the rest of humanity are in prison then. <laughs> Whether you like it or not, that's that's what we're doing here. You know, look, well, look at the movie The Matrix. That's where uh, Neo was. You know, when he woke up out of that shell, he was in the clip off. That was the tunnels of set with them damn spiders. That's another thing you'll see in the tunnels too. If you hate spiders, um, work it out. <laughs> <laughs> work it out because that's what you got <laughs> um so yeah you can um you can you know have some good experiences in there too i mean everybody yeah we make it sound like it's all destruction and whatnot no there's there's also positive applications for this particular energy as well this particular current you can apply that to anything you got to open up your mind and think outside the box yes it's dark yes it's heavy yes it's dealing with death um, but you can apply that to other things as well, too. And ego death is not necessarily a bad thing. You're letting go of your self-importance so you can create a new you because this is what you are doing. And this is like self-help on crack is what you're doing here on the clip off. You know, and, uh, and Tony Robbins has got nothing on, on you with this. So this is very helpful to you beneficial yes some of it's going to be rough it's going to be um pr pretty uh hardcore somebody says that uh kenneth grant's typhonian trilogy is currently being reprinted by starfire publishing that's badass yes look forward to that you know because that's needed and also acid mason wrote a book on uh the tunnels of set i haven't read it nobody tell her please <laughs> i have i haven't read that yet so and, and she always writes some pretty practical books. You know, it's not just a bunch of words and information. There's also some practicality that you can apply. Um, 
because I mean, it might be easier to understand for some her her writings than Kenneth Grant because Kenneth Grant goes in. It's like reading stereo instructions. Yep. So it's um it's pretty in depth, pretty deep, and he also gives a technique to really do somebody in with it. So and and, and really also think about the concept of doing some work like that. You're not doing this work on somebody that stepped on your new shoes on the bus on the way to work. Um, when you're doing that kind of work, it's somebody that's blocking the path of evolution, your evolution, uh, maybe even the evolution of humanity, you know, big target that's got a lot of energy. Yeah, and that's and that's what you're getting when you do that. When you are blasting somebody, they get, especially when you're using this and tormenting, yeah, that's releasing a lot of energy. Because believe it or not, they're doing it to you, whether you like it or not. You're, you're getting done in. If you don't understand the symbolisms that you see and some of the stuff you on television, you're probably stuck. And you're, you're in the right place. Do your work and get out. So that, um, that particular current and energy, uh, my experience with that was complete pandemonium. I, I'm not one of these people that say, oh, yes, I'm a veteran of the tunnel set, whatever. Um I'm fairly new to a lot of that, but my um, uh, intro to that, going into that, it was pandemonium, like chaos. Mm -hmm. So everybody's experience is going to be different. Some people have, uh, you know, all of these wonderful uh, imageries and just wonderful gnosis and everything. Um, for me, it's always aggression a lot of times that I run into in some of this stuff. But everybody's um, experience will be unique to them because we're we're not all we're not the same. There'll be some common commonality or some common thread that we'll see in in a, in a working that somebody does, but it's not going to be exactly the same. Which brings me to another point: if you use this in a ritual working or something like that, that doesn't necessarily mean that you initiated into it just because you work with it in the spell. It's not the same. You know, it, it, it is definitely not the same. I, I just, I want to get, want folks to have that understanding that working with something and initiating into something are not the same animal. When you are initiating into these spheres or the tunnels, you're opening them up. And that is opening them up in your psyche, in your physical space, the the whole nine yards when you're just working with it you're just doing spell work lighting a candle blah 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 whatever and you know going on with your day-to-day -day life but when you are oh actually initiating you know that the ritual is over but you know it it ain't over it's you, you'll start the uh, there'll, there'll be things that'll be happening some things that you'll think really suck some things that you know it, it's just it's just part of the game. That's, that's how this works. You're clearing out garbage. You're getting rid of uh, outdated beliefs. You're laying those to rest. We all have different identities that they refer to as ego, ego death. So we get rid of those identities because we want to get to the real individual. You know, that the, the black hole, you, the real soul, the black hole sun, that's you. But we have to peel away all of this nonsense first to get to it. And it's not going to be easy. Not, it's not going to be uh, pretty. And you'll probably hear me say this just about every one of these. So that's correct. And I'm, uh, I thank Demetrius for mentioning that, that fact: the difference between working with and initiating into the cliff hop or any other work. It is very different. You know, there is so many things that happen when you initiate yourself to this. For example, working through the cliff off in my personal work, uh, my results usually are chaotic, flipped upside down, the world turns crazy, blah, 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 blah. And it doesn't last for a week, two weeks. It can last for six months or more, seven months, 10 months, whatever. Always remember that. I'll give you an example. I still hear from some of the people that used to be in the classes. They're just now getting a result from some of the rituals they did a year ago, two years ago. And that's why Demetrius said that. 
you're not going to get the result right away sometimes. Sometimes it could be when you're least expecting it. You're, you're, you're going day to day in your life. It's been two years. And all of a sudden, boom, it hits. And then when it hits, you sometimes feel like you're frozen in your track because you're like, where the heck is this coming from? But then there's this thought that rises to your mind and says, ah, I remember when I did that ritual. I remember when I did the ritual with Nama. I remember when I did a ritual with Bilal. It's hitting now. Why did it take so long? Well, there's a reason why sometimes rituals don't work right away. Demetrius said that clearly too. Sometimes there's a lot of layers that have to be lifted off of us. And so the work that you're doing, a ritual that you did is lifting or releasing the veils that you put around yourself for your protection or blinding yourself. And as they come off of you, now the work can really take hold, can really do what it's necessary to do. So sometimes a ritual is still working, even though you may not get some fabulous, overwhelming result, it's still working. But it depends how many layers of caca you have on yourself. How many layers you have in your conscious, unconscious, subconscious mind that have to come off in order for the results to finally take hold. It, it's, this is why the journey is a lifelong journey, literally. Because it will hit you when you least expect it. It doesn't always hit you when you want it or expecting it. It's when you least expect it. Sometimes people don't get results. They think they're not getting results and they're frustrated. They're upset. Nothing's happening to me. But one of the reasons is because you're, you're, you're basically weighing your results against someone else's. Mm -hmm. Mistake number one. Two, you are expecting immediate results and didn't realize I have to be patient. This is not Harry Potter. You're not going to wave a wand and immediately something happens. Although people would like to think that this is not Harry Potter. And if anybody out there in YouTube land is telling you otherwise, there's a damn fool. All right. Because things do not happen immediately all the time. I'm not saying they won't. I'm saying they always don't happen immediately, but that doesn't mean they can't because I'll give you an example. If you're 45 years old, you started doing this work on the left-hand path now, and you expect immediate results, that's 45 years of garbage that you have to really dig deep into within yourself and start really working 45 years back. You really think that's going to happen overnight? No. We're complex beings sometimes. Some of us are overthinkers. Some of us are underthinkers. Some of us are irrational. Some of us are rational. So over analytical, analytical, instinctive, whatever. Right? But the point is, whatever you've incurred, whatever you've experienced is here. And therefore, if you're 45 years old, why would you think this is going to create a solution in one day? A week, two months, three months, that's, that's, you're lying to yourself, one. Two, that's not how this works. Mm -hmm. And three, you got to realize you have a lot of garbage in you that you have to literally uncover, confront, deal with. So for you, anybody who's done this, to think, oh, my God, I'm not getting results, I'm giving up, you did a disservice to yourself because... Yeah. If you've never worked on this level of left-hand path magic and to think otherwise, you're doing a disservice. It's going to take time. It takes a long time. You could be 25 years old and you still have a lot of garbage because you may not have as much garbage as somebody who's 45, but you may have a lot of garbage still from the 25 years you've lived from family, from society, from education from religion, all these things are bombarding us at all times. Now we're in a new day and time though. Demetrius, myself, and some of the other ones here who, who were 70s babies. Yep, I said it, 70s babies, right? We didn't experience life 
without caller ID. Life without answering machines. Life without cell phones. Life without computers. So on, can I, I could keep going on and on and on. We were rough on it. <laughs> yes. Straight You roughing. had to actually read a book. <laughs> Bingo. We weren't able to Kindle it. We weren't audio. We didn't have audio. Someone reading the book to you. No, you had to do the dirt, dirty down work. So some of y'all in here who are older, y'all know what I'm talking about. Now, the young generation, the young generation, they have all these gadgets. So your experience in this younger generation with these gadgets and everything is totally different experience than some of the older generation who had none of that stuff. So those experiences, you have to take that into account also when you're doing the work. Okay. There was, there was times that we literally had, you know, the light outside was when you knew you had to come inside. Kids don't even go outside nowadays. It's like a ghost town some, in some of these neighborhoods. You don't see no kids anywhere because everybody's gaming. Everybody's on their phone. We used to be outside playing ball. We'd make up games out in the street. How many of y'all remember making up games out in the street? Yeah, we did it. Made up games, all kinds of games. But when that street light got dark, we knew we had to have our ass home. Because if not, mama or daddy was at that doorway like this with the belt. Y'all remember them? You know, my dad used to be famous with them thick leather belts. Y'all know them leather belts. They had the big ass buckle. And he used to just snap that at the door. Not, some, not an experience that some of y'all want to live through. But we did that. So that experience has some effect on my mind compared to I'm in my room all day playing a computer. Do you understand? Keep that in mind as you're doing your work, though. All right, let's see if anybody has questions. In... Oh, uh, real quick, I wanted to mention another yeah, book. Um, Enoch Petroselli wrote a book, too, called The Black Witch. Um, okay. If I'm not mistaken, I think he went over the tunnels as well in there, too. Yeah, he did. He did. You can actually find the book or the PDF. Just look yeah, for it. Real good dude. All right, so let's see. Let's go into Zoom, see if there's questions in Zoom first. All right, anybody has questions? Don't all everybody raise your hand at once. You know what I'm saying? Because y'all do it after the fact. See, no questions. Everybody just looking at me. All right, so let me go into YouTube and come back. All right. Uh, more so well okay no questions in here either yeah uh also uh the and i think i spoke about this before on um the cliff off but vampirism is important too that's why in this first tunnel because you notice that the first two cliff are very vampiric mm -hmm. and then this first tunnel is very vampiric too because psychic vampirism is something to learn and yeah it's you know, they're gathering energy and whatnot but that's not only just to drain out um uh, you know, everybody is walking past you at the bus stop. Um, that's also to help you in these uh, tunnels in the cliff as well, too, because that's receptivity. You're pulling that energy into yourself. You're absorbing it. You're taking it in. Uh, that is the tr that's the true essence of the initiation. It's activating that within you. You're bringing all that inside because it really is inside. I mean, these are neural pathways and things like that that are being opened up and activated. I mean, this is the mystery of, uh, oh, that, all that cult stuff made people go crazy. Well, they were crazy already. And, um, yeah, we just, the door just got open. And they didn't deal with bats in the belfry. They just let them bitches run wild. So, <laughs> and, and then they had to take start taking medications for that. I mean, it happens. But, you know, that's part of it because this is, uh, this is your mind. This is your brain. Things are being developed, shifted, and changed. And, you know, some folks just don't want to let go. Correct. And that's 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 why um, in the vampiric classes, we we went over not just vampiric work, but also that your journey as a vampire is about apotheosis as well. Sometimes people have trouble gathering or connecting the two because sometimes we feel like, oh, vampirism is just about feeding. And that's not always true. When you are in this, let's say, realms of existence that are not you know an everyday occurrence in your life 
that's when you understand vampirism the most in the astral realm. The experiences you gain in the astral realm, what you encounter in the astral realm, that's when vampirism comes in the most handy. That's when it's most necessary. Mm -hmm. I was oh, here. Oh, uh, Ravonna, we got some uh, questions popping up in the YouTube. Just want to let you know. All right. All right, cool. Let me go into there now. But that's when it becomes more handy. All right. Um, wait, where are we at? Okay. Uh, and Demetrius, I'm going to say this. Uh, you, could, you could start um, with this question. Endless Love asks, how long does it take through, uh, wait, how long does it take to work through the whole clip off and tunnels on average? Um, yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead with that one. Uh, there really is no average. That, I mean, you're not going to do this in a week. It's, it's not going to happen. Because I know folks will say, oh, yes, I did all 11 uh, spheres of the cliff on one night. No, you activated all 11 spheres of the cliff off in one night. You're not finished with it yet because they're not finished with you. <laughs> so it could take you two years. Of, uh, I say one year on the fast side, two years, you know, on uh, just an average, maybe a quote unquote average, but it's a lifetime work. This is not like something that you'll ever be done with. You're always working. There's always more depth, but you're also growing and gaining at the same time too. Uh, when you're doing the entire uh, dark tree, that's including the uh, the tunnels as well too. So that's some that's some time that you're putting into that. So you're not you're not going to rush through it. Yeah. Now you can rush through it. It doesn't mean it's going to benefit you. Yeah. Um. So like brother this brother said, it could take a year, two years, but I personally like to say for the rest of your life. It will take the rest of your life because this work is ongoing. It's always ongoing. And just because you complete, let's say, the tunnels and, and, and the cliff off, right? You're always going to go back and revisit them. You will be guided within your, your, your inner self will guide you to go back into certain cliff off because you understand at that moment something is drawing me back into this because there's something I need or missed when I first worked through it the first time. So like from example, for myself, I've gone back into the clip off, different cliff out of time for years now. It's, it's always going to vary from time to time, place to place, depending on your life and what circumstances are in your life that you're going to need certain work in different cliff or different tunnels. All right. Um, next question. <clears throat> Shango's Killmonger says, do you have mercy as a vampire? Should we have mercy as a vampire, Demetrius? What's your take on that, brother? <laughs> um, if you're a vampire, you're a predator. So um, ask, wear a meat suit and ask a lion, do they have, do they have mercy? Yep. I mean, I'm serious about that. Um, I mean, you're, you're, you're going to be you. You're going to treat whoever you're going to treat, however you're going to treat them. But as far as that, that ruthlessness, relentlessness, um, that's that's also part of this path, too. As a matter of fact, that's actually one of this cliff off. Um, I just came out of that cliff off. Gog Shabla. The name literally means ruthless. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, you pick and choose how to, you have to use mercy. You can use that as a tool of manipulation. To get what you want, I mean that's what I would advise you of. That doesn't mean you get you know carte blanche to be a dick. <laughs> you know, you go out there and you just treat people anyway. No, you just when you are doing something or want to do something, especially like with a goal, don't show any mercy to yourself. Accomplish that goal. I think a lot of times we um, we're too gentle on ourselves, Bingo. and that's why we don't accomplish our goals. And that's something that I have to learn myself sometimes. You just have to be ruthless with yourself yeah. and just say, hey, no, you can't lay down today. You can't eat that. You can't go there. You can't do this because you've got this thing that you want to, to accomplish. And then you can have all that other shit. Yeah. So, yeah, mercy is not always in the, um, the realm of, um, you know, people, but it's with yourself, too. And mercy is on the other side of the tree. It's nowhere on the uh the dark side. Okay. <laughs> it, it, it's not on the tree. It's not on the cliff off. That's on the tree of life. Yeah. 
So listen, um, in con I concur and agree with Demetrius. Mercy should never be shown, especially to yourself. And I wanted to add on to that because sometimes we fail to be brutally honest with ourselves. And on this work, that is essential, to be brutally honest with yourself. There's a lot of stuff that we, you know, um, we make excuses for so that we can continue down our old ways, keep alive our old programming, and therefore we fail to be brutally honest. And you should never, ever give yourself mercy, especially when you know you have work that you need to accomplish for your growth and development. No one else's, just yours. Why would you make excuses? We hear excuses all the time. We discuss this all the time. How many excuses people make for not being on their journey? You can hear everything, money, time, whatever. You always make time for yourself, for your development and growth. Therefore, be brutally honest with yourself and say, okay, am I making excuses? Am I being lazy? Am I not doing the work? Am I, am I caught up somewhere else in life? Am I you know, enabling my weaknesses to continue? Nine times out of 10, you will say, yes, you are. So mercy is never given to yourself and definitely not given to obstacles and blockages that are in your path, whether it's a, a person or whatever else. That's Why would you show mercy to someone who's blocking your path? And we do this quite often and we allow that person or whatever else to continue existing in our path and make excuses to keep them there. Oh, they the bomb sexually, or they this, or they give me money, or this. And that is the worst thing you could do on your journey. Stop, stop being so merciful. Because if your enemy had you cornered, nine times out of 10, they're not gonna have mercy for you. It's a wrap. And as a predator, we definitely don't show mercy. So always remember that, all right? Always remember that. All right, we got uh, a, I think, go we got ahead, a chat in the Zoom, and then I'll take that next one on, in YouTube once we get done with the one in the Zoom. All right, so Zoom. We have a question in Zoom? Yeah. yeah. This path is a lifestyle. I'm definitely, is that the question? No. No, uh, got a hand raised. Oh, where it is? Who's got the Remnants hand? Remnants gathering. Oh, I see remnant. Okay. Yes. Great conversation as usual. Yeah, um, yeah. So this is my question. Mm -hmm. This this almost feels like something that um, is interdimensional where like you can cross from universe A to universe B. Is mm -hmm. that what this tunnel allows you to do? One of the things that's possible? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, these, okay. The tunnels and the cliff are itself, the main cliff are the main gateways they are all taking you to different dimensions or realms of existence. So yes, you will. And that's why when you go through some of these, you encounter different beings, different entities, energies, things like that, because you're literally going through and you're like, okay, let's say you're in the astral realm, right? But parallel to the astral realm is another dimension. Or let's say a multiverse, right? It's one of the multiverses that's parallel to this, this pathway. Yeah, you can cross over. And that happens quite often. And that's mm -hmm. when you start to receive or contact or be, you know, all kinds of things can happen from great to shitty. You know what I mean? But that's because we're crossing over into different ways, different realms, pathways, and gateways open up. Sometimes we're ready for them. Sometimes we're not. So, so, okay. So how, so would this, would you say like basically leaving the, leaving the material plane and entering into the causal plane? Because it kind of seems like to me, everything that we have found ourselves 
to become a victim of. Um, and so this is this is like getting rid of that victimhood on a whole other level. But like it seems like they're initiating the masses, the golem who are unconscious of these things throughout other tunnels that they don't even know they've been they going through on a mass level when they do certain things. So it's like a mass psychosis or something like that. I feel like it's happening. So it feels like right now this it was no other time for some of us to even start this until now because we needed this much soul work to get to this point. Because if you go into a judgmental, it can affect your trip, kind of like with, with plant medicine and psychedelics. Is that true? Yeah, definitely. All right. For example, let's deal with the psychedelics for a second, right? Remember, most of the time in the past when you dealt with uh, taking a psychedelic, it was a, an initiation usually, right? Mm -hmm. A healing or initiation was taking place. But you usually had a guide with you right to go through that so that somewhere along in that psychedelic experience you are crossing into different realms and in different areas of existence when you're in, taking a psychedelic you wouldn't get trapped because the shaman or shaman would know that there's certain entities or energies there that are waiting to trap you do you understand mm -hmm. well when you look at that in a whole on a whole on this planet that's what's what happens quite often here. The, those who work this, especially in the clip hop, experience going through those gateways. What happens is because we have the experience, we can we learn how to shut down the gateways of different things so things don't mm -hmm. bump in the night, so to speak. But a lot of what happened on this planet, a lot of times people are tapping into things they're not ready for. So shit is open everywhere. And therefore, this is why you're having people have the most craziest experiences right now, because mm -hmm. people are tapping into these things without the proper work, without exactly. the proper initiation. And they don't know that when they come back, you're supposed to shut it or, you know, lock that gateway behind you. Therefore, whatever was, let's say, haunting you on that realm, it's going to come back through here. Mm -hmm. You may be back here in the physical, but guess what? Your consciousness can get trapped over there. And that's why sometimes people who get too deep into psychedelics and things, mm -hmm. they veg out. And what I mean by veg out is their body's here, but the mind, their consciousness is stuck over there in another realm. Because one of these energies, entities, whatever, devoured them or started feeding off of them. They weren't able to break free. That's why it's like a step-by-step -step process. And sometimes people are impatient and that happens. They get stuck over there. You understand? And, and therefore... I, trust me, I know people personally who did psychedelics, different things like that, and never came back. I know physically they're there, but when you try to talk to them, they're like gone. Their mm -hmm. eyes are like, their eyes always look bugged out. They mm -hmm. really can't, you know, uh, formulate sentences anymore. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that wow. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So sounds sounds like we should um do this completely sober if possible. <laughs> yeah. Because Fax is, is enough. It seems like a name that's not even said. I asked that question and you kind of led into my next question, which was for some of us who um might be a little bit new to some of these things, would you recommend maybe us um having our guardian with us, our, our demonic gatekeeper? Like if there's there's a resonance there. And if we're a little nervous about it and just be like, yo, this is what I'm doing. Assist me with yada, 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 so I can have a full impact like that. Is this something that's workable like that? Be creative and yes. have that guide? Yes. But, or is that a crutch? Well, it can be a crutch, but at the beginning stages, some, some people will need a guide. I'm going to be honest. Some people will need a guide. But mm -hmm. the problem is with the guide is it becomes a crutch for most people and they never can break free of the guide. And if you're going to take a guy, take a demon. Do not yep. take a fucking angel into the thing. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right, brother. Right. <laughs> okay. That's yeah. it. Thank you. All right. Cool, cool. All right, let me see. That. Any other questions? Um, All right. Um, so there was a... Were you taking? Go ahead. Yeah, there was a question by Endless Love. Again, she asked, what is a source vampire? Mm -hmm. um, at its simplest, the source vampire is one that resides in universe B, which is that other side, um, mm -hmm. you know, kind of with the tunnels of set and beyond that. 
-hmm. and someone who has mastered that. Because are all vampires in the universe be? No, because I know there are vampires who go to church. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that are Christians and whatnot. But a uh, source vampire, what it resides in the universe be, actually feeds on chaos, mm -hmm. uh, primarily. A, not necessarily a life force eater, but one that's consuming chaos. So basically becoming like Lucifer or set. A chaos being mm -hmm. consumes chaos beings. Mm. Wow. Hope that answers your question. I just kept yeah. it simple. Thank you. Of that. <laughs> <laughs> Who asked that on, uh, on the YouTube chat there? Thank you. Yep, yep. All right. So... Let me see if there's any other questions. Could y'all be sneaky like that? Y'all throw questions towards the end and then, you know. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. Let me see any questions in YouTube before we close this off. All right. No more questions. Why somebody throw a question when I'm about to shut this down? Well, right, one, so one, one more um, yeah, statement ahead, uh, by Tyrone Times. Mm -hmm. um, he asked the question, since my father was a Dracula, I guess he meant a vampire. Does that... That makes me a vampire, right? Um, not necessarily so. I mean, if you are running with a family bloodline tradition and whatnot, possibly. But, I mean, your father is your father and you are you. If you have taken that step to do that, congrats. Um, but if not, not directly by blood like that. I mean, yeah, you might have some genetic inklings and leanings, but if you're being pulled that way, then do so. I mean, yeah, we, a lot of times when we work in, when we have these family traditions, like um, your grandmother was a witch, your great grandmother was a witch, and so on and so forth, does that automatically make you that? Not necessarily. If you're not picking up the work, it may be there in your, in your genetics, but you may be denying that or not connecting to that, or you might connect to something else. But I mean, but if you take that up, okay, now it, it's you, because those are, those are those folks then you are yourself. So it's, it's up to you. It's your choice. Yep. Okay. And by the way, somebody posted in the chat on the Zoom, uh, Night Side of Eden. Thank you. Yep. There you go. There's, there's a link right here. So all those in the Zoom chat, let me see if I could copy this and put it in the, hold on. I'm going to put this in the YouTube thing for the Night Side of Eden. Hold and on. there's some nasty curse work that you could do with this That's tunnel. <laughs> All right, there it is. is. So Y'all can see that on YouTube. That's the link to the Night Side of Eden by Kenneth Grant. Yeah. Check it out, people. All right. So I put it in YouTube. It's here on Zoom. Definitely click on the link and you can get some PDF files on the work. Some serious stuff. The Night Side of Eden from Kenneth Grant. Listen, he's the forefather of a lot of this, this stuff. So people realize it or not. I think he was one of the first that actually uh, really started putting it out there for um on the tunnels of set because yep. i can't think of anybody that was talking about that before him maybe crowley maybe because i mean, crowley had that weird experience with that with that alien thing and then yeah. he failed his jump across the abyss yep. and um he was never the same after that that's true corazon had uh her foot in his ass for the rest of his life <laughs> that's right <laughs> ugly scene yep all right so my peoples, um, this live YouTube and Zoom will be done every other Thursday. So not next Thursday, Thursday after that. We'll be continuing with the tunnels of set. We'll do a second tunnel next uh, two weeks from now, two, two weeks from Tuesday. So make note of it. I'm not going to post it on YouTube. Just y'all were here tonight. Just expect that on Thursday, two weeks from now, Eight o'clock, we'll be on here broadcasting from Zoom, connecting to YouTube, all right? Yeah, Those click on, on the notification bell. Yeah. Those on Patreon, they'll see it posted on Patreon, all right? So thank you all for coming out. This was a fun class, ten, intense class, but it was fun. So the next one, when we do the second tunnel, will be even a little more intense. Y'all, listen, just because we're talking about this, you're going to feel... The darkness, like, getting... I already do. I'm hot as fuck right now. <laughs> yeah, me too. I'm sweating over here, goddammit. And I've got to go to... I got some work that I need to do tonight, too. <laughs> me too. Me too. So we're going to do some stuff uh, two weeks from now. So look out, all right?
from the greens, from the blessings. Thank you all. 